task to make the stack of notebooks move from point A to point B. So what can I do to make them move? Obviously, I'll have to apply some force on this side. And now, when I apply the force, I see that, you know, I kind of need to apply quite good amount of force to make them move. Now, is there any shortcut that I can do so that, you know, I can move the same stack of notebooks but with a lot more ease? Well, there is something that I can actually do. So for that, what I do, I take some sketch pens and place them on the table. Now, I take the stack of notebooks and place it over the sketch pens. Let's see what happens. Now, even if I put a little bit of force, what happens? We see that it moves. So it moves so easily. Very less amount of force I need to apply. So let us try to understand the science behind this experiment. Basically, we will have to understand how things changed when I placed the sketch pens below this stack of notebooks. We have learned about the three types of friction, that is static friction, kinetic friction and rolling friction. We have also learned that the force of static friction is more than that of kinetic friction which in turn is more than that of rolling friction. So let us understand these three types of friction using these stack of notebooks. Now right now these notebooks are at rest. Now I apply some force at this end of the notebooks. But what happens? They do not move. Why? Because there is a static friction which is acting in the opposite direction and which is not letting them move. Now, as I increase the applied force, I gradually reach the value of limiting friction when it actually starts to move. So, this is the limiting value of static friction. Now, once these notebooks start to move, it is kinetic friction which is acting opposite to the direction of the applied force. Also, in kinetic friction, if you see that the surface which is in contact with this table, so these two surfaces are constantly in touch with each other and as a result, they are rubbing against each other. So the friction is little more in this case, kinetic friction. Now we will look at the third scenario where we will be able to move the notebooks but with little effort. We have now placed the stack of notebooks over a series of sketch pens and this time we see the moment we apply even little bit of force, you see it rolls very easily and smoothly. So what's happening here? So in this scenario, rolling friction is acting. So here if you see that these sketch pens, they are rolling on the surface and as a result, at a particular point in time, there is just one point which is the point of contact and that point of contact is also changing every instant, right? And as a result, the surfaces in contact are not rubbing against each other and therefore the friction is less. But the scenario in case of kinetic friction was quite different. So there the surfaces were rubbing against each other and therefore the friction was more. So here you see, very by, uh, since the rolling friction is less, therefore the force that needs to be applied to make them move is also very less. So we apply very little force to make them move. One important point that needs to be noted is, the sketch pens which we have used here, these are cylindrical. Right? If you see, they, they are very smooth. Now, instead of using these sketch pens, if you actually use some sort of pencil which has a flat surface, you might not be able to see this effect because the moment the surface is flat, it is, it is again the kinetic friction which will be acting and not the rolling friction. This experiment gave us some nice information on rolling friction. This would have also given you an idea that how such heavy vehicles move on wheels. Yes, rolling friction works. Like and share the video. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.